Number one tells us that it takes two ounces of paint to cover all six sides of a rectangular prism box, which holds 15 cups of sugar. Double the dimensions of the box, approximately how much paint would the new box need and how much sugar would it hold. So when we're looking at how much paint would it need, okay, so it originally needed this much paint, um, and paint is an area measurement, okay, then the other thing that they're asking us to look at is the amount of sugar that the box holds. So how much sugar would it hold when originally it held um, 15 cups of sugar? And so how much does it hold inside of the box would be a volume measure. And then they're telling us that they are dilating it or they're giving us a scale factor of doubling the dimension. So here's our scale factor. So remember when we deal with area to get new area, we multiply by the scale factor squared. And when we deal with volume, we multiply by the scale factor cubed. And so in this case, our scale factor is two because we're doubling. So we're going to multiply the area by two squared, and we're going to multiply the volume by two cubed. So our original area, again, we're talking paint. And so the original amount of paint was two ounces of paint. So we're going to do two times two squared. Okay, so the new amount of paint needed would be two times four or eight ounces. Then for the volume, okay, our original volume was 15 cups. So we had 15 cups of sugar. So then we're um, now gonna be able to fit in 15 times two cubed or 15 times eight, which is 120 cups of sugar in our new box. Number two, we have a solid with a volume of 12 units. So we've got volume given to us here. And then they're dilating by each of the scale factors given and we wanna come up with the new volume. Okay, so our original volume is 12. So we're gonna take 12 times um, each of these scale factors. And when we're dealing with volume, remember that we multiply by our K cubed, okay? So volume needs us to multiply by K cubed. So we're gonna be multiplying by, um, in this first one, 1 fourth cubed, or in this next one, 0.4 cubed, times one cubed, times 1.2 cubed, and times 5 thirds cubed. So the original volume, um, times the scale factor cubed. And so when we do this for this one, we get um, 0.1875 and then cubic units for volume. Okay, for this next one, um, when we do 12 times 0.4 cubed, we're gonna get um, 0.768 units cubed. Scale factor of one doesn't change anything, so we're just gonna continue to have 12 units cubed. Multiply 12 times 1.3, or sorry, 1.2 cubed, and we'll get 20.736 units cubed, and this scale factor was larger than one, so our volume went up versus these other ones have gone down. And then this is larger than one also, so this one's gonna get bigger. And so when we multiply 12 times 5 thirds cubed, we get 55.56 units cubed for our new volume. Number three, um, a, a solid's volume is 10 cubic units. And the solid is dilated by a scale factor of 3.5. Kieran says, I calculated the volume of the image to be 35 cubic units, but I don't think that's right. What might he have done? So it looks like Kieran took the original volume 10 
And then when he multiplied, he multiplied by the scale factor of 3.5 because 10 times 3.5 does give us um, 35. And so when he was using volume, he should have been multiplying by this 3.5 cubed. So he um, multiplied by K instead of K cubed. And so then what would this volume be? So if we did do 10 times 3.5 cubed, we would get our new volume as um, 428.75 inches cubed. Number four, a parallelogram has an area of 10 square feet. Complete the table that shows the relationship between the dilated area, which is our X, and then the scale factor that would have produced it. So remember when we're doing area, so our new area would equal our original area times K squared. So we're trying to solve, remember that the scale factor is K. So I'm going to take and divide by the original area. So that's going to give me um, new divided by original equals your K squared. Then we're going to end up having to square root this. So we'll square root the new divided by the original, and that's going to give us our K value. So we would do zero, our new, divided by the original. So remember, this is the original. So zero divided by 10, which is zero, and then the square root of that is zero. 40 divided by the original gives us 4, and then we would square that and find out that our scale factor was 2. 160 divided by 10 gives us 16 times bigger, so then we'll square root that and get 4. Divide by 10 here gives us 36, square root that, and we'd get 6. Divide by 10, and we have that this area is 64 times bigger square root it, and we would get 8 for the scale factor. Then it wants us to plot these points on a coordinate axis and um, connect them to give us a smooth curve. So we need our x-axis to go up, or sorry, our y-axis to go up to 8. Okay, so I'll label this as 8, and then halfway between that would be 4. So this would be 2 and this would be 6. Then we need this axis to go up to um, like 640. So I'm going to put 600 here. So halfway between that would be 300. Halfway between that would be 150. Um, so we've got this at 600, this at 300, 150, and 450. And um, so then we can start trying to plot these a little bit. So at zero, we were at zero. Okay, at 40, which this is 150, so this is 75. So 40 somewhere down here, that's at two. At 160, so just above 150, we were at four. At 360, so here's 300, here's 450, so 360 is somewhere in the middle here we were at six, and then at 640, we were at eight. So then just connecting that with a smooth curve, which that wasn't very smooth, let's try again. So connecting that with a curve would give you something like that. All right, number five, a figure has an area of four square units. This equation represents the scale factor of y by which the solid must be dilated to obtain an image with an area of x. So our x is the area, our y is the scale factor needed. Um, select all points which are on the graph. So we just need to plug them into here and see if they equal out. So remember the first one is x, the second one is y. So y equals 0, does that equal the square root of x, which is 0 divided by 4? 0 divided by 4 is 0, the square root of 0 is 0. 
So zero equals zero. So this one is good. Okay, this next one, the y value is one half. Does that equal the square root of the x, which is one over four? Okay, and for square roots, you square root the top, which is one, and you square root the bottom. So square root of four is two. One half equals one half. So this one is good. Okay, for this one, our y value is one. Our x value is 1. So then we'll simplify this root here. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. 1 half does not equal 1. So this one is bad. For this next one, our y value is 1. Our x value is 4. So we would get this. Okay, 4 over 4 is 1. And the square root of 1 is 1. 1 equals one, so this one is good. And then the final one, okay, our y value is two, our x value is eight, so eight divided by four, which is two, and the square root of two does not equal two, so this one would not be good. Six, Tyler is designing a banner that will welcome people to a festival. The design for the banner has an area of 1.5 square feet. The actual banner will be a dilation of this design by a scale factor of five. What will the area of the actual banner be? So remember that for this, we'll do the original area, 1.5, and then we'll multiply by the K value squared since we're in area. Okay, and the K value or the scale factor is 5. So when we do um, 1.5 times 5 squared, we'll get our new area of 37.5 feet squared. So that'll be the size of the new banner. Number seven, the horizontal cross sections of this figures are dilations from the bottom rectangle using a point somewhere above it. Um, and this has scale factors from one to one half. So this top, to, to get this top one is a scale factor of one half. Sketch an example of a cross section that could be created using a scale factor of three fourths. Um, and so three fourths we know is directly in the middle of, so one half, which is in fourths, two fourths. And then one, which in fourths is four fourths. So three fourths is directly in the middle of that. So we want this K value to be directly halfway between this one half top and this one bottom. So then we'd want it to be kind of right here. And then the dimensions um, would be taking the original times your scale factor. So one times three fourths would be three fourths. So these um, would each be three-fourths. All right. Um, a regular hexagon can be inscribed in a circle with a radius of one. What is the area of the shaded region? So for this, we're going to first want to find um, the area of that circle. And then we'll find the area of the hexagon and just erase it out of the circle area. So for the area of the circle, um, remember that area is pi times the radius squared. And in this case, they told us our radius is one. So the area of the circle is actually just equal to pi inches squared. Okay, so there's the area of our circle. Now we wanna find the area of this hexagon. So for the hexagon area, remember that we can split this hexagon into a bunch of triangles and then we're gonna to have to use trig. So the angle here, six of these will fit into this whole thing. So if we do 360 divided by six, um, we get 60 for this large angle here. Then we can um, go ahead and split this triangle so that we get the height. Since for area of a triangle, we need to do base times height. And that would be half of this angle. So this is actually a 30 degree angle. 
And now instead of using trig, we can actually use 30, 60, 90 formulas. So we know that this hypotenuse here is one since that's the same as the radius of the circle. So we can see, um, let me just get this drawn on here. So this is actually the same as the radius of the circle. So that length is one. And then using 30, 60, 90 formulas, this would be the short side. So this would be half of the hypotenuse. So this would be 0.5. And then this length would be the short side times the square root of three. So we would do 0.5 times um, the square root of three, and that would give us 0.866 for this height. So then we could find the area of this triangle, okay? So this triangle by doing, um, and I'm just gonna find the area of this whole triangle. So this length right here is um, one, because this says 0.5, so this would be 0.5. So the base is gonna be one times the height, which is 0.866, and then we would divide by two. So area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So the area of this triangle is going to be 0.866 divided by 2, or 0 0.433. So that's the area of this triangle here. And then we know six of those fit into the hexagon. So the area of our hexagon is going to equal the area of that purple triangle times 6. So the area of our hexagon is equal to 2.598. So then to get the shaded region, okay, we would take the circle and subtract the hexagon. So our circle is pi, which is 3.14, um, 159, so 3.14159, whatever you, however far you want to go with that, and then minus the hexagon, which is 2.598. And so if we subtract that, we would get um, that the area of the shaded region is about 0.54 um, and then inches squared. All right, then number nine says two distinct lines L and M are both perpendicular to the same line N. So let me draw in N first. So here's N um, and then lines L and M are both perpendicular to it. So here's L and then here's M. They're both perpendicular to that line why are they parallel to each other? So we know that this is a 90 degree angle. We know that this is a 90 degree angle. So how do we know that they're parallel to each other? So um, we know that these corresponding angles are congruent so that we could just translate these angles down to here. And then by translations, um, we know that the lines are parallel. So we could just say corresponding angles are congruent, um, therefore the lines are parallel.